Welcome to the life of Van Gogh. We will start season 1 here. Season 1. The Making of an Artist. 1853-1883. In season 1 we will explore the time from Van Gogh's birth till he becomes an artist. The early life of Vincent Van Gogh didn't look very promising. No one would have believed that this young boy will one day become one of the greatest artists the world had ever witnessed. He had a rough start with an imperfect family relationship and frequent bouts of depression and other mental health issues. Episode 1. The Family. 1853-1875. Vincent Van Gogh was the son of a Dutch pastor, Theodorus Van Gogh, and his wife, Anna Cornelia. Their first son was stillborn, a year later to the day, on March 30, 1853, another boy saw the light of day. This healthy son was given the names of the stillborn first, Vincent Willem, after his two grandfathers. So Vincent van Gogh's very first day of life was an ominous one. This curious fact need not have disturbed the parents too much, but ever since a veritable army of analysts have been responding to the lasting fascination of a child. That was born on the anniversary of its death, as it were. And it may well be that Vincent's taste for the paradoxical grew out of this remarkable coincidence. His family lived a quiet life in the modest vicarage at Zundert near Breda, in Dutch Brabant. Theodorus's father had been a pastor too, indeed, so had generations of the Van Goghs. They were not strict Calvinists in belief, but adherents of the Groninger Party, a liberal branch of the Dutch Reformed Church. Vincent was profoundly influenced by the hard-working and pious atmosphere of his parental home. And the eruptive violence with which he expressed himself strikes us as a necessary strategy for ridding himself of the cozy image of the world that was imposed on him in childhood. Theodorus and Anna Cornelia Van Gogh had six children. Vincent, the firstborn, was followed by Anna Cornelia, born in 1855, Theo, born in 1857, Elisabetha Huberta, born in 1859, Wilhelmina Yakova, born in 1862, and finally Cornelis Vincent, born in 1867. During his lifetime, Vincent was to keep up close relations with only two of his siblings, Wilhelmina, to whom some twenty letters dating from late in his life were addressed, and Theo, his financial support, father confessor and viewer of his pictures. The childhood and youth of the siblings seemed to have been much what we would expect in a petty bourgeois household, and later, after a fit of madness, Vincent was to long for the unruffled happiness of his Zundert home. During my illness I saw every room, in the Zundert house, every path, every plant in the garden, the surroundings, the fields, the neighbors, the graveyard, the church, our kitchen garden at the back, down to the magpie nest in a tall acacia in the graveyard. Letter 573. In the last year of his life, longing for his childhood home never relaxed its grip on Vincent Van Gogh. Vincent's father had no fewer than ten brothers and sisters. Vincent's uncles, who lived in various parts of the Netherlands, emphasized their authority over their nephew. Four of them played an especially influential role. Hendrik Vincent Van Gogh, Uncle Hein, was an art dealer in Brussels. It was under him that Theo first ventured into the wider world. Johannes Van Gogh, Uncle Jan, had been made an admiral. Vincent was to live at his home in Amsterdam for the best part of a year. Cornelis Marinus Van Gogh, Uncle Cor, was also an art dealer. And thus active in the field that, along with the pulpit, was the other traditional profession of the Van Goghs. Indeed, Vincent Van Gogh, Uncle Sent, was also an art dealer. He was the young Vincent's godfather. He had made the most impressive career for himself, working his way up in The Hague from the most modest of beginnings and ultimately incorporating his shop into the gallery chain of the Paris art dealers Goupil and C. There the young Vincent was to make his own first contacts with paintings and drawings. The family had found a respectable station in society, and the constant pressure to conform which was brought to bear upon Vincent must have felt all the more burdensome. When his own career as an art dealer, soon proved to have been a false start. In due course, the resigned 24-year-old was to write to his brother, Letter 98. When I consider the past, when I consider the future, all the well-nigh insuperable difficulties, the vast and arduous toil no taste for and which I, wicked I, would like to avoid, 
when I think which I feel of so many people, gazing at me, people who will know of the eyes what the reason was if I am unsuccessful, people who will not level. The customary reproaches because, tried and tested in all things good and decent, in all that is refined gold, they will say by means of their expressions, we helped you, we were a light to you on your way, we did what we could for you, did you sincerely want it? What is our reward? Where is the fruit of our labor? When Vincent joined the branch of Goupil and C in The Hague, as an apprentice in 1869, at the age of 16, there seemed no obstacle to the kind of career the family council would have wished him. Goupil was one of the leading firms in Europe and had recently begun its conquest of America. The house specialized in the reproduction of printed graphics, and leading engravers and painters worked for it. By 1869 the firm had seven branches. Uncle Sent was a partner in it. From 1873, the firm was also Theo Van Gogh's employer. Vincent was subsequently remembered as a friendly, dependable employee, the reference written in 1873 by Mr. Tersteg, manager of the branch in The Hague, was a paean of praise. When he was transferred to London in summer 1873, the move was doubtless meant as a reward. It was that transfer that finally set the stone rolling. Till then, statements such as, Theo, I must seriously advise you to smoke a pipe, it does you good when you're in a bad mood, as is often the case with me. Letter 5. Had been secret confidences. The inescapable loneliness Vincent was soon to experience in London, was to accompany him his whole life long. He had fallen from the broad lap of his big family, and now nothing more kept him in the self-sufficiency of a predestined path in life. The tone of his letters to Theo became noticeably more melancholy. His appeals to the common fraternal spirit were quintessentially expressed in the image of a walk taken together. How I would like to have you here some time. What fine times we spent together in The Hague. I think so often of. Our walk along the Reisvike Road where we drank milk after the rain near the mill. For me, the Reisvike Road is connected with memories, that are perhaps the loveliest of all the memories I have. Letter 10. The coziness of an idyllic walk was to accompany Van Gogh's life, as an artist and became one of his recurrent themes. In the upcoming episodes, we will explore some of his arts and his religious and philosophical beliefs. Please subscribe to follow us on this journey of an artist par excellence.